Good morning guys, we've got a ton to do today. So I realized, when I moved to Southern California, the traffic well, it sucks. Well, the people of Santa Monica, minus Farshot, of course, have figured out that using a bicycle is the most effective means of transportation. But what happens if you don't want to exert a lot of exercise and ruin your clothes, and you want to get from point A to B a little bit faster than a normal bike? That's what I'm here to find out today. Ooh, I like where this is going. Well, this is a first. The bike I'm reviewing today is called an Aerial Rider. It's all electric and it's actually really fast. Now having experienced all electric vehicles and stuff like the Tesla Model S P100D, I know the battery technology is ever expanding and advancing and there's some pretty awesome stuff that all electric vehicles can do that gasoline powered ones cannot. So what's an all electric bike like to ride? Let's find out. One thing you guys might not know about me is a long time ago I used to actually ride downhill mountain bikes competitive. Now while a Santa Cruz V10 bicycle with 10 inches of rear travel is quite a little bit different than an electric assisted one, the passion for bikes is still there. What stood out to me with the Aerial Rider is its looks. It's classy and it's not bulky. I love how they didn't try to cram the battery into the top tube. Instead we've got the 48 volt battery located behind the seat post. However, because it's black, you don't actually notice it much. The lines flow together very, very well, and the bike's design is actually made to mimic a vintage motorcycle, and it looks fantastic. The Aerial Rider has a 500 watt motor capable of pushing this to 30 miles an hour, which is actually very fast. It's got 45 newton meters of torque, which is one, the best in its class, and two, plenty to scare the crap out of you upon initial acceleration. To charge the bike, all you have to do is tilt the seat forward, Turn this to the unlock setting, pull the battery out, and then you're able to charge it in just a few hours at home. The craziest part of the entire bike has to be its range. It can go 130 miles. That's farther than a Fiat 500e, and unless you're a Tour de France rider, that's likely five to 10 times farther than you've ever ridden on a bicycle. So the bike is fast and has long range. Sounds pretty good to me. The only real downside is that it is pretty heavy. However, to transport it, you've got a nice quick release here so you can take the front wheel off to make it smaller. It's something that a lot of electric bicycles don't have. The bike I'm on right now is called the W Premium. There's other bikes available such as the C Comfort, the W Comfort, and the N Premium, depending upon the specs you want, the range, the speed, as well as practicality and comfort is concerned. So let's talk about price. The W Premium I'm riding right now starts at $1,999. For people who aren't aren't familiar with the world of premium bicycles, something like a Santa Cruz V10 Carbon, a new one right now, goes for five to seven thousand dollars. Well, and that doesn't really, uh, yeah, it doesn't power itself. For two grand, you're getting something that can go farther than a lot of electric cars. You can park it anywhere, and honestly, it comes with more leather and luxury than a lot of cars available on the market with extra zeros attached to their price tag. I'm pretty stunned at the quality of this. You got genuine leather for the handles. You've also got a very comfortable leather seat. I like that the tires are brown. It works really well with the green exterior. I can't really call it an exterior because there's no interior, but hey, I'm not a bike reviewer. I'm a huge fan of the way this bike is operated. We've got this beautiful digital screen here where you can control the intensity of the assist, which I'll talk about in a little bit, as well as a turnstile, just like on a motorcycle, throttle instead of a button or a lever you just turn the handlebar and you start going forward. This is kind of dangerous. Oh my god. Okay. The actual power delivery comes on quickly and extremely smoothly with instant torque that we know and love that electric motors provide. Well, what happens if you actually want to ride the aerial rider like a real bike? Well, of course you can. You've got a seven-speed Shimano derailleur that shifts into gear very nicely. The best part is you can actually control the level of assistance while pedaling thanks to Ariel's power on demand system that provides the perfect amount of assistance when you're going forward. This way you can convince people that you're actually exerting physical activity, but you're not. It's kind of like setting the elliptical at the gym to a resistance of one. See, here's zero assist, but why would we do that when we can crank it all the way up to six? Overall, I'm super stoked on this bike. It's incredibly high quality. It goes really fast. That's obviously important to me. Good job, Ariel, honestly. Two thumbs up for me. If you guys are curious about more info, check the link in the description below to aerialrider.com. These things are pretty badass. Let's get on with the day. Well, they're both green. I might as well just trade the Lambo in at this point uh, for an all electric bike. What do you guys think? Back at the place, switching gears a little bit, I'm gonna be meeting up with Hoofy's Garage to check out his C36 AMG that he bought for some ridiculously low price 
at a total impulse buy. This guy's awesome, let's go. Here's the Hoovy itself. Dude, what, what is a Hoovy? Hoovy, that is a nickname, a last name. Actually, my dad got it in high school and then it kind of moved over to me. All right, so. I dig it. We are inside uh, the Hoovy and it smells like an old Mercedes. It's got a good, it's got a good classic Mercedes smell to it. The first thing I noticed actually is that it's got this strip that reminds me of the new Jaguar XJL. So basically, you, you got a $120,000 sedan right here. We already almost crashed, this is kind of sketchy. It goes to show you, in order to have well over 100,000 subscribers, really all you need is this 1980s camera here, runs on VHS tapes, and then you record external audio on an iPhone. And Doug DeMuro, with more subscribers than anyone on the planet combined, uses an iPhone. And Street Speed uses a GoPro for every single shot with no case and just carries it around. This is actually a pretty darn good looking car. And he bought it for almost less than it cost to get into this parking lot. It was $9 to get in. How much was this, five grand? Five thousand dollars. Yeah, how many? Never any superchargers is that? Yet? Not even close to one. That actually buys about half of one cylinder on a new Lamborghini Huracan motor. I think this is probably cooler than half of one cylinder. This is actually one of the more ghetto, fake looking AMG badges I've ever seen, yet it's definitely OEM. Correct, 1995 only was the only year the C36 had the badge down there. And for one to still be on the car is like unheard of because you whack a curb and it falls off. Yeah, yeah. and who needs one central windshield wiper when you can also have wipers on your lights. I mean, this is basically like a Zonda, if you think about it. Exactly. I struggle to open the bonnet here, as they call it in fancy terms. Look at where the release is. That looks fragile. Yes. Really fragile. The first Mercedes I ever had, actually, with that lever, I used it to lift up on the car and snapped it. Yeah, I imagine I so. We've got a pretty interesting project here. So this was a C280, which then they sent to AMG. They completely took the engine out of the car, bored it from 2.8 liters to 3.6, and now it produces, well, honestly, I think it's 268, he thinks it's 286, so we're not sure. Maybe take an average of both of those, but I don't know. It's a good motor. What do you think? How does it drive? It's great. It's a streamer, so it's like the Mercedes version of an old M3, and that's what yep. I really like. Yeah, absolutely. Except it's heavier and only comes in an automatic, but we won't go over that. Okay. Sorry. Oh my God! It comes with its own tic-tac-toe game. Look yeah. at that. Yes. Wow. That's exciting. From 1993 to 1995, the government mandated that the wiring harness had to be biodegradable, but what they really meant, it was a ploy, planned obsolescence, so that the entire wiring harness would be destroyed, it would be just out of your warranty period, and then Mercedes could make a bunch of money off of you. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Let's go ahead and hop in before I make up some other random crap about the engine. Inside, we've got a four-speed automatic with nicely weathered wood trim. No manual option, and this used to say C36, but now it kind of looks like uh, the bottom of someone's heel with athlete's foot, but it's vintage, baby. I will say, for an old car that has pretty small dimensions, the rear leg room, as well as headroom, is more than adequate. You've got these cutouts for your knees. Those are lovely. And you've got to be pretty tall, right? Yes. You fit in this quite well. Yes, it's fantastic. Like a glove. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Ooh, that's nice. Isn't your car like that? It is like that. Yeah. I just didn't expect it. Yeah, they did that all the way back from 1980. Wow. Oh, he has kindly trusted me with his really expensive car. You've worn me it. down with all of your backseat driving. I, I, that's, what what, you that's the problem. So I just filmed a five things I love and hate, except it's five things he loves and hates about this car, which is the weirdest experience ever. I was like living vicariously through you, filming a, a hate about video, but it wasn't me. I was in the background being annoying. It was just kind of awkward. But you've had this car for, you've driven it a thousand miles? Yeah, in and a you, week. Yeah, in a, <laughs> in a week, that's awesome. And you're already done with it. I mean, no, I just, I have to get home and take care of some business and uh, this is already proved that it's a good car, obviously, for a thousand miles all over California with all yeah. this crazy stuff. I'm from Kansas, so this California and these roads, dude, how do you do it? What about them? Aren't they good? The people, they don't 
know which direct. Uh, never mind. The All people right. don't know what they're doing. The yeah. roads themselves are good. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, Highway One was beautiful, except yeah. it was closed down from the south. That okay. Kind of... Well, you should just go back to Kansas. This is just weird. Well, for people who don't know about you and your channel, you have a ton of quirky Doug DeMiro style cars like this. What what else do you have? To rattle them off, it's kind of the hoopty fleet is what I call it. And it's always a revolving door of weird cheap stuff, starting with a 98 Jeep Cherokee and XJ that's actually really clean with 360,000 miles. Oh my, wow. Uh, a 93 Lincoln Town Car, Jack Nicholas edition, which is a golfer, <laughs> but it has green carpet and white seats like a golf glove and it's got over 200,000 miles on it but there's also some more interesting stuff I have my Porsche 911 that has the LS swap going on it's getting an LS2 from an 06 Corvette and it's drivable now getting close to completion and probably my nicest car is the 92 NSX yeah. which is something that I bought sight unseen that had some serious issues that I sorted out so we're sort of deep keep with a the theme of the hoopty fleet but it's that's probably the least hoopty car of the bunch. How much was the sight unseen NSX? It's 30 grand. Oh, well, that's a steal. Less than 100,000 miles in a manual transmission. Yeah. And clean to idle. What so could yeah. possibly go wrong? Uh, a lot, but <laughs> I, I went through it all, yes. Have you announced your latest most ridiculous car? Or are you keeping that a secret? Uh, yeah, it's a 2004 Continental GT that uh, is the cheapest one in the country like I normally do. It's way cheaper than you think it would be. And, but it's got some serious problems. So that'll be coming in the next few weeks. So you get a preview if you watch Parker's channel. I bought a a police interceptor for a good deal of $700 in the middle of the ghetto and I didn't die, but I almost died. But you got a, a Continental GT for basically the same amount of money. So I'm, I'm a little Yeah, exactly. Little yeah, $700, yes, yeah. you got, <laughs> nailed it, nailed it. Yeah, it's one of those dream cars that I never thought that it'd be cheap enough to justify but it, yeah at 700 bucks or whatever I actually paid for it, it actually it actually is so you're driving this thing about five miles an hour what do you think steering wheel is large it's got kind of an interesting feel to it at the nine and three position it's like it does it wants you to put your hands at anywhere other than where you're supposed to we've got these grips here see this is like old school Parker this is with uh, the original intent of vehicle versions were cars that kids would be buying right yeah what have you had to do to this car anything I put front tires on it just wow. because yeah but it's been fine and it was five grand yeah 5300 that's awesome mm -hmm. zero to 60 in 6.4 seconds is actually pretty damn fast for mm. a car of this generation 14.7 second quarter mile it definitely starts to slow down at the end there and apparently it's electronically limited to 155 but if you're able to take this to 155 then you deserve an award the visibility in this thing is fantastic. It's like sitting inside of an aquarium looking out. You've got a large front window with their Jag XJ ripoff style thing here, but even though it's 25 years before that, so it's not a ripoff whatsoever. Rear window's huge. What surprised you the most about this car? Well, this is actually the third one that I've had, so I circled back to it, but um, I think just the the ride quality, even though it's been lowered, I was kind of expecting it to not ride as good and feel as nice on the highway being a C-Class, because normally I'm like you, I'm like an S-Class guy, Yeah, and that's what I have. I have a 2007 S600 uh, V12 by Turbo at home. That's freaking legit. It, it was 4,500 bucks, it had a blown motor. <laughs> and I, Mine was that too. Yeah, I put, the, the used motor was 4,500 bucks, and then another $4,500 on top of that just to sort the thing out, but uh, still really cheap. But, yeah. I'm used to that. I'm used to the, it's a, the last breath of that hydraulic suspension and that really silky smooth V12 by turbo. And I thought I'd get in this thing and it would feel primitive. And really, it doesn't. It has no, it still has nice. that bank vault feeling that these old Mercedes had. And the ride quality, even with the lowering springs, is still really good. The noisiest part of the interior of this car is me. So <laughs> it's, it's not bad. Well, cool, dude. This has been fantastic. Thank you for letting me drive this, and we got to go out in the Lambo and show yeah. you. I don't know what I'm going to show you, but I'll show you that. Yeah. My video, I razz on him pretty hard. He is an awesome sport. He's a lot of fun. Really, really nice guy. And oh. then I got to see him in Monterey dealing with his fans, especially the younger ones. Super cool, dude. I, guys, oh. you're oh. you're real lucky to have this guy. I had guy. to pay him so much to say that. It's really awkward. <laughs> Thank yeah. you though, dude. I really appreciate it. And he's like older than my dad. It's weird. I didn't realize that you're older than Doug DeMuro. I'm 
I'm old. I'm, I thought Doug was 75. I didn't realize I, uh, he was 29. I've got that Grand, Benjamin Button disease. Granddaddy DeMuro. <laughs> I like that guy's parking job. Like, are you kidding that's, me? That's what I got to film that. I said, this is what Lambo life is. You have to be so careful. So this will be fun because I get to ride in a supercharged one. Rode Brian's when it was stock. It's not, this isn't quite as comfortable as the, as the C36. That's what I'm noticing right off the bat. That was my first ticket ever was a mattress flying out of the back of my truck that I put in to go to the drive-in movie theater. We still have those in Kansas. It was on the main, main highway. Wow. And, and the ticket said, failure to secure load. <laughs> <laughs> What's the like craziest car deal that you've like seen in the future that might be a cool thing to get? The Maseratis, you know, of course you're skipping the ones with that horrible F1 clutch, but the Quattroportes and those early Gran Turismos, yeah. they're getting in the yeah. 20s now, <laughs> yeah. which is nuts. I mean, Wait, some of the Gran Turismos are? Yes. There's, oh my God. You go on Odd Trader, you'll find some for, you know, 29.95 and 31.32, which is wow. a whole lot of car. That's crazy. I know the old Quattroportes were getting down into the low 30s, high 20s. Oh, Those I've, cars are kind of piles of crap. They are. Doug did a great video on them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah what was that like? How to look rich for 30 grand or something grand. like that? Yeah. Which really, I'm seeing sell for under 10 at the dealer auctions, you know? Oh but my gosh. You can't take a chance and buy one because the clutch job is, is four grand. Yeah. And. Challenge! Are you ready? You're in Cash Cab, Huracan edition. Oh, what's the question? Um. <laughs> yeah, <they do> it. <laughs> I'm not a very good Cash Cab host. Generation car. <laughs> It's all in uh, Italian. Batteria. But I, I've actually learned quite a bit of Italian since I've owned this car. Like, um, press is pressure, oh. and uh, olio is oil, olio. and batteria. It's I, me, I, olio. I I'm it's, gonna win. Yeah. Well, we always win. channel and subscribe follow hoovies garage i look forward to seeing you next video